Hello, this video is for Math 3. We are getting ready to go over your Math 3 final exam review. The long one, the one that has 80 questions. Yesterday, we went over um, like the first three together um, questions and I asked you to do um, the first 10 problems. Today, I'm gonna do with you um, problems 11 through 20. I'm gonna try to see how many I can get inside this uh, recording. Um, and then I'm gonna ask you to do some. All right, so you still have your TODs um, to complete in Canvas. Um, today, you should have a new one popping up that says 12.9 and 12.10. It's in your modules. So you can get to that um, inside of Canvas. And go to our class. And you're supposed to be going to modules um, for all of your classes. All right, so there's this one. This is the one we're about to work on. This is the one, we did both of them yesterday. We did a little bit of both. And you don't submit any of these unless you are going ahead of me and finishing, but you don't know everything in here yet because I haven't taught it to you. We haven't talked about it, uncovered topics, stuff we have not talked about. Do not submit that yet. This one, we you've learned everything, but you haven't done it in a while, so. Um, but by all means, if you want to go ahead, I think that's, it can only help. I wanted to say something really quickly. Um, this week, the math department at NAS Central is offering you something called EOC Blitz. Um, and this is when you can visit any of these teachers, any of these teachers, um, Okay, I'm just looking at their schedules. You can visit any of these teachers, not just me. So my link is up there, but you can visit any of the math teachers to get um, help with this review that we're about to work on. And they have the answer key so you can ask them for help. Um, and all the EOC courses are doing this. So math one, it, you know, you might be in there with some math one kids too. Um, that, that may be asking for help. So anyway, just wanted to point that out to you. Let's get started. Yesterday you were supposed to do one through 10. So let's start with 11, let's see what it says. Okay. Which rule defines the function in the graph? Okay, so getting right to it. So which rule defines the function? You see that we have three pieces and then your answer choices are, um, piecewise functions. So what you need to do is just match the pieces together with the correct domain, right? So let's just start with the first piece, starting from left to right, this is the first piece. So a flat line, if you recall, is written as y equals, y equals and then whatever number you're at on the y axis. So um, let's see, looks like they're counting by two. So negative two, negative four, negative six. Okay, so all of, let me see if all the answer choices have. They all have negative six. So let's look for the one with the correct domain. Well, this um, function has an open circle here and a closed circle there. So that means that for interval notation, for x equals negative 10 to x equals positive two, there is a point at positive two. There is a point, it's closed. There's not a point at negative 10. There might be a point at negative 9.9999999, but there's not a point at x equals 10. So parentheses, I just wanted to point that out. But for this, it's going to be, you know, the equal versus not equal. So negative six with not equal to 10 and equal to two. So this one looks okay. Let's check the other ones. Anything we can rule out. We can rule out B and D because they have 
they say equal to 10 and not equal to two, right? Equal to 10 and not equal to two, and that's wrong. So not B, not D, so it has to be either A or C. Okay, let's go to another piece. All right, um, this next piece is a line. Lines are written in slope intercept form. Your slope is from this point up to over one. So positive two over one is just positive two x. And then we want our y intercept, which it, it's not touching the y axis, but we can make it, we can extend the line so that it, it will. So if you just extend your slope this way, then let's keep it green. then you're gonna have a point at the origin, okay? Which means that your y-intercept is zero, which we don't have to write. It says zero, we don't have to write that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, I'm actually gonna get rid of that too. All right, so let's find, all right, positive two x. The reason it's positive is because if you put Eugene up here, and make him go that way, he's gonna be going uphill. So positive slope, positive two X, not, not A. It can't be A, it must be C. Let's just check the domain. All right, so what X's are we using here? All right, your X's that you're using X is at one and both of these are open circles. So, and then X goes all the way to eight. Oh, excuse me. So that's a, that's a two. Two and then it goes to X equals eight. And there's not points at two or eight. So not equal to, oops. Oh, it wasn't A. I was like, where's 16 coming from? 16 is the Y value. All right, so the answer here is this one. Okay, we don't even have to check the last one because it can't be any of the other ones. Okay. This one is using 16 because that's the Y value, but your domain is the set, it says X, X is. So you look at, how wide is the graph? Well, it only goes from two to eight. All right, so let's go there. Which shows there we go. Sometimes you gotta refresh if the code isn't popping up there. Which shows this um, expressed as a piecewise defined function. All right, so this is the absolute value function. Looks like that. They're saying, what if you were to pretend that instead of an absolute value that this was two lines put together, if you separated these two segments, what would be the two equations of these lines? Okay, well, let's go to Desmos. Absolute value of 2x minus 12. Absolute value of 2x minus 12, okay? So um, you've got a um, horizontal uh, stretch and a horizontal translation. It moved to the right. Um, well, it looks like it only moved six, but I'm, it's because of this, this two, you'd have to divide. Anyway, not concerned about transformation rules. 
they want to know what are the equations of these two segments? Okay, so this one's easy because it has a y-intercept um, that we can see here. Um, and then we can find our slope. So let's get our slope. All right, this slope is negative because Eugene from left to right is going to be walking downhill, right? So what is the slope? The slope If I start here, is negative something over, let me see what I'm counting by. We're counting by twos here. So negative four over, so negative two, negative two. I mean, yeah, duh, because two X, Miss Cole. So this one is y equals negative two x. And the, the y-intercept is at positive 12. Okay, this one, let's extend this line. Your slope is um, negative two. So from here, you would say, yep, you would go through here and then you would go through here. Okay, following this same slope, it's the same over here, except it's positive. So from here, it's up to that way. So if I, I just extended it this way to see what my y-intercept is. And my y-intercept is right here at this point. Right there. So this equation is y equals positive 2x minus 12. Um, yeah, the only other thing you have to figure out is your domain for which x values is this true. So we need y equals, um, okay. So they all have the same equations. We gotta find the correct domain. This one is true for the x's um, for, all the x's that are less than, okay, so let's get rid of this stuff so you can see. All right, so your domain, right? Your domain says, what? how wide is this thing? So if we drop this little imaginary, bar right here. We only care about what's happening on this side. So my x's, I'm using all the x's, excuse me, in the negative x direction. So from negative infinity all the way until x equals six. So all the x's that are less than or equal to six. Let's see what they have. So for the plus 12 one. Okay, so the way they have this is we're going to do it by this one first. So going back over here, just real quick. This one starts at the same place, so all the sixes that are bigger, because we're going to the right, right? We're going that way. Even though it's pointing up, we're only asking about the x value, so it's still going to the right. So for how long is it going to the right? Forever. So all the x's that are bigger than or equal to six, and then this one is less than. 
Now, how do you know which one is bigger than or, or uh, which one is going to have the equal to or not? It, you just, we, we were given answer choices. So we did process of elimination, right? All right, so um, what? I need to click an answer. So this one says, um, you have your plus 12 and it's less than six. And this one is bigger than, but it says negative six. So it's not that one. We want the same number, six, positive six right there. And see our plus is matched with the less than, and then our minus is matched with the greater than. Use the um, graph, it says, what is the solution of the inequality, blah, 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 bigger than zero? Okay, so for this to be bigger than zero, first of all, you a mm, couple ways. You could do it on the graph. You can go straight to your graph. X squared, it was negative X. All right, so see how this negative flips that's a transformation rule, opposite of f of x. Okay, then you're adding a number not in parentheses. So that's gonna move it up, plus 16. You moved your vertex up, okay. Um, what's the solution of the inequality bigger than zero? Well, all the part, the inequality, all the values that are bigger than zero y values that are bigger than zero, that's from here to here, okay? Because y equals zero is right there. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so they wanna know for what x values. Okay, that's that part of the graph, but what are these x values? From negative four to positive four including the point, or maybe not including. Okay, they didn't include. We need um, a 16 and from negative four to four. Oh, okay, X is less than negative four. No, that would, so this one says, this one's not the answer because less than negative four would mean this way, All right? So not gonna be that one. Can't be C because it's not turned the right way. Must be this one. That's the answer. Ooh, 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 ooh. This is the answer. Use graphing technology to approximate uh, the solutions of the equation, blah, 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 to the nearest 10th. Ooh. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do before I can type this into my graphing calculator, it needs to say Y equals. So I need to get, I need to move all this stuff. This is gonna be ugly. Okay, so let's move this stuff. I'm gonna have X squared minus three X plus 11 equals absolute value. All right, absolute, oh man, absolute value of X minus five plus 13. Okay, so we need to move this stuff over here, right? I'm going to, an absolute value of X minus five, I, I wanna put this X with this, but I don't think I can because it's trapped inside this absolute value. And that's weird, let's see. If I subtract this from both sides, okay, it's not going to combine with anything. I don't think it is. So let's do this, minus minus, 
Okay. So minus three X. Okay, now that I did that, what if I moved this 13 over by subtraction as well? Because that cancels and this is canceled. That's the whole point, right? Minus 13. Well, 11 minus 13 is negative two. Okay, so let's see what this thing does. I've never seen a function like this. Let's see can't what this looks like. X squared. Hopefully, we don't get an error message minus the absolute value of x minus five. Okay, no, minus three x minus two. Okay, still a parabola. I guess once you plug in x here, it's just this is just going to turn into a number. So. But that's weird to look at. Okay, so and it says use this to, to find, to approximate the solutions. So x squared has, um, is a parabola. Okay, it's that thing. And the solutions, remember, solutions are Solutions are um, roots, are x-intercepts, are zeros. All of these words are referring to the same exact thing, okay? So we're looking for x-intercepts. Where does our red thing, where does our parabola touch the x-axis? And it should touch twice. That's why I highlighted x squared, two x's. Okay, where? Right there, right there. So you would pick the answer there. Negative 1.8, there it is right there. Classify by degree. Degree, remember, is your highest exponent on a variable, the highest exponent. So normally it's in the front if written in standard form. So here's your degree. Four means quartic. That's your answer there. Classified by the number of terms. Okay, your number of terms means how many things are you putting together in between your plus signs. Okay, one, two, three, four. Polynomial of four terms. Trinomial would be three terms, binomial would be two terms. What is the graph um, of this? One fourth X cubed. So this is a transformation. One fourth means a um, vertical compression. Let's just go here. 0.25, which is one fourth X to the third. Okay, well, first let's do this. X cubed is, um, that's the parent function. Okay, so when X is one, oh, when X is one, which is right here, There you go. When X is one, one cubed is still one. When X is two, two cubed is eight because two times two is four times another two is eight. So that's how this function works. So when you, so these values grow really, really quickly, right? Because it went from one to eight. So when you, when you say multiply by a fourth or divide by four, divide all the answers by four, that's going to compress. That's going to make it come, you're gonna squish it together like that, okay? 
So not this one, because remember it was going this way, it was going up to the right. Not that one, not that one. This one, this one moved all the way up, it shifted. We just want to compress it. That one. Couple more. Write the polynomial in standard form, then name the polynomial based on its degree and number of terms. So standard forms mean standard form means put your degree, highest exponent on a variable first, and then write everything else in descending order. So you're gonna have negative five G cubed. The next highest exponent is the two, so plus nine G squared. The next one is a one, so, and it's positive, plus four G to the first, which I don't have to write, and then minus six, okay? So um, there are four terms. So it's a polynomial of four terms. And your degree is three. So that's a third degree polynomial or a um, cubic. We just saw it was cubic up here. All right, a cubic polynomial, a cubic polynomial. So honestly, you don't even have to know what standard form is. You could, you could figure out cubic by, by figuring out your degree, right? Your degree is a three, so that's a cubic. There's four terms, so polynomial. Okay, you can do elimination like that. So let's do it that way that here. Let's see if we can. Uh-oh, your degree is two, but there's two terms with a square in it. So that means you need to put those together. You got to combine like terms first. So if you put those together, you're actually only, only going to have three terms. It's going to be a trinomial. What type of trinomial? A quadratic. Quadratic almost sounds like a quarter, but it's, it's not. That's not what we mean. Quadratic trinomial. Once you put those two, once you put negative 11x with positive 6x squared, it's going to be a trinomial. Ooh, what is the relative maximum and minimum of the function? We're going to a graph. 2x cubed plus x squared minus 11x. 2x cubed. Minus, oh, plus x squared minus 11x. Plus x squared minus 11x. All right, so. What they want, maximum and minimum. There's definitely both here. And they've highlighted it for you, boom. Don't you just love Desmos? There are your answers right there. Um, let's see what they want. Yeah, they wanted it as ordered pairs, so there you go. There you go. Negative 1.5 and 12, looks like that's the answer. And then one and negative eight. Yeah, there you go. All right, so I'm going to ask that you try to do. So I just gave you the answers to um, 11 through 20. Can you do 10 problems on your own? Can you do 21 through 30? These are all, oh, these are easy. Please try these on your own. Please try these on your own. These are all foils. All right. Um, I'm going to stop right there. Remember, don't submit unless you are ready for it to be graded.